There are many noteworthy objects and beautiful phenomena in deep space. There is the Tarantula Nebula, where active star formation is currently taking place, the most massive star ever seen by humanity, the mysterious supernova SN1987A, and the megastar WOHG64. All of these wonders of space are united by the place where they are located, the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy. Despite its modest size, it not only harbors all of the aforementioned objects, but also countless mysteries, enigmas, and secrets, and in the future, it may even threaten the solar system with catastrophe. Get ready for an incredible journey, friends, as we explore the most interesting aspects of the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy. It will be interesting. While we are on the way, let's get to know the object. The Large Magellanic Cloud is located at a distance of 163,000 light years from us. It is a dwarf spiral galaxy with a bridge, one of the Milky Way satellites. Yes, not only planets have satellites. Due to its unusual shape, it is classified as an irregular galaxy. Significant distortions are present in its structure caused by tidal interactions with its younger sibling, the Small Magellanic Cloud, and our Milky Way. The diameter of the Large Magellanic Cloud, we will also refer to it as LMC, is about 10 times smaller than our galaxy, and its mass is 300 times smaller, while its radius is about 14,000 light years. Despite this, it ranks fourth in size in the local group, behind only Andromeda, the Milky Way, and the Triangulum Galaxy. The Large Magellanic Cloud has been studied for many centuries, and in the Middle Ages, it was of special interest to navigators. For example, Magellan used the galaxy for navigation calculations during his circumnavigation, and it received its modern name from him. However, it was only in 2013 that astronomers were able to accurately calculate its distance, and a little earlier, in 2006, measurements with the Hubble telescope helped determine the rotation period of the galaxy, which is 250 million years. The Magellanic Clouds, both the large and small, were formed at the same time as our Milky Way galaxy, about 700 million years ago. The Large Magellanic Cloud passed by the Milky Way at a speed of 327 kilometers per second, establishing its current distance at 163,000 light years, which will gradually decrease over time. Like most irregular galaxies, the LMC is rich in gas and dust, leading to active star formation. It is a veritable astronomical treasure trove, with approximately 60 globular clusters, 400 planetary nebulae, 700 scattered clusters, as well as hundreds of thousands of giant and supergiant stars. Over 30 billion stars are located in this region, and there is much to behold. The true gems of the Large Magellanic Cloud include the largest star, WOHG64, surrounded by a gas and dust torus, and the brightest hypergiant star, Asteratus, located in the northern part of the LMC. If this star were located in place of the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri, there would be no dark time on Earth. The dynamics of the LMC, which are atypical for its enormous age, are of special scientific interest, as there are many young stars here that are much younger than the youngest stars in the Milky Way. The Tarantula Nebula is the focal point of active star formation and is truly a stellar nursery. Here we will make a short stop and take a closer look at it, because the Tarantula Nebula is special. But first, what is a nebula? It is the name given to an interstellar medium region that stands out against the background either by its own radiation or by absorbing radiation. Originally in astronomy, any extended object in the distant cosmos was considered a nebula, and only later, thanks to the ability to precisely identify such objects, the concept of a nebula gained a more rigorous definition. Nebulae are composed mostly of clusters of dust, gas, hydrogen, helium, and plasma. There are different types of nebulae, such as the coal sac nebula, a dark nebula in which dense formations of interstellar gas and dust are concentrated, with so much dust that it completely absorbs light. There are reflective nebulae, they glow due to the reflection of scattered starlight from the bright stars located within them. There are also shock wave nebulae, they appear as a result of explosive ejections of matter from stars during supernova flashes, as well as due to the stellar wind from Wolfrayet type stars. 
Emission nebulae are clouds of ionized gas that emit intense radiation in the visible range. Ionization in them occurs most often due to streams of high-energy photons from young stars with high temperature. This is the type of nebula NGC 2070, which we vividly call the tarantula, due to its external similarity to the famous spider. The length of the tarantula is 700 light years. Everything here is essentially an area of ionized hydrogen. The distance to it is 179,000 light years. Imagine if we swap the tarantula with the Orion Nebula, it will not only be visible to the naked eye in the night sky, but will also be 55 times larger than the full moon. The nebula contains 800,000 stars, including relatively recently formed protostars that are still hidden in cocoons of cosmic dust. The central part of the nebula contains a small but extremely bright cluster R136, which emits a large part of the energy that enables the nebula to glow. It is here that the most massive and brightest star known to science is located, R136-01. The weight of this giant exceeds the solar by 265 times. Thanks to its brightness, this area is simply excellent for studying the processes of stellar evolution. In 1987, a supernova exploded on the edge of this nebula, which was so bright that it was visible to the naked eye from Earth for some time. It was later named SN1987A. This supernova formed from a blue supergiant with a mass 17 times larger than the solar mass. It strongly influenced our science, as a result of which a whole series of theories were revised. She had a strong influence on our science. Thanks to her, a whole series of theories regarding stellar evolution were reconsidered. For example, it was previously believed that only red supergiants and wolf rayet stars could undergo supernovae. Further X-ray and gamma-ray observations allowed us to uncover the mystery of SN1987A. It all started with the merger of two stars, a large one and a relatively small one, which formed a rapidly rotating blue supergiant. And more recently, in images taken by a complex of radio telescopes in the Atacama Desert, signs of a young neutron star were discovered in the remnants of the supernova. The pulsar is still surrounded by dense layers of clouds, but in the next decade, they will disperse, allowing us to directly observe the radiation from the neutron star. In many years, our descendants can expect truly stunning changes in the astronomical picture of the world. We have already mentioned that the Large Magellanic Cloud is under strong gravitational influence from our galaxy. This means that in approximately 2.5 billion years, the Milky Way will begin the process of absorbing the LMC. Such a collision will awaken the dormant Sagittarius A asterisk black hole at the center of our galaxy, likely increasing its mass by a factor of 10, and possibly even turning it into a powerful quasar. But these are still controversial questions. What does this mean for the future of Earth and its inhabitants, if there are any left by then? Most likely, the planet's inhabitants. Most likely, the inhabitants of the planet will be able to observe the brightest cosmic fireworks of high-energy radiation emanating from the vicinity of a black hole. But some astrophysicists predict a different outcome, the ejection of the solar system from the galaxy. And after that, in a billion years, Andromeda will begin the process of absorbing the Milky Way. In general, cheerful times lie ahead. Let's hope that by that time the inhabitants of Earth will be ready for the collision and, if necessary, will be able to take measures to preserve our species. But for now, we can observe the Large Magellanic Cloud as a beautiful object in the night sky. The easiest way to find it is to imagine a line between the stars Sirius and Canopus the galaxy will be located near this line. However, it can only be seen in the Southern Hemisphere. So, if you plan to visit South America or Australia, you will be able to admire the galaxy, and even better, take a colorful astrophotograph as a memory for distant descendants.